All right, in refrigeration, um, you have to consider low ambient temperatures. You know, in, in residential air conditioning, we don't have to worry too much about low ambient temperatures, but refrigeration is always cooling and always freezing. So no matter where you live, they're going to be operating in low ambient conditions. So when the temperature falls below 60 degrees Fahrenheit outside, the air entering the condenser causes problems with um, head pressure. So the low ambient temperature causes low head pressure, which causes metering problems, especially in TXVs. And what will happen is it will cause that TXV to st first starve the evaporator coil of refrigerant, and then it's going to flood the evaporator coil. And it's going to it's going to hunt back and forth and first flood and then starve, and this causes refrigeration issues. So we have to control the head pressure to keep these uh, commercial refrigeration systems cooling and freezing properly. So there's two ways that that can be done. The first one is the fan cycle control. It just turns the fan on and off based on head pressure. Now the fan cycle control works very well. It's pretty simple and it's used mainly in the southern states where the, we don't get really really low ambient temperatures outside. Now when you get up into North Dakota and it becomes frigid outside, even turning the fan off does not raise the head pressure high enough to prevent these metering problems. So there's a method called condenser flooding to take care of the head pressure problems. So first let's take a look at the fan cycle control. So the fan cycle control is just a pressure switch and when the head pressure falls below a set point it uh, breaks the connection, turns the condenser fan off. Then when the head pressure rises because the condenser fan is off at a certain point, it will make that connection and restart the fan. So the first thing you'll have to do is install the fan control. Here it is right here. It does have a pre pressure sensing connection that you're going to connect to the high side of the system. You'll have to find a port to connect it to and many times you'll there'll be more than one high side pressure port on the condenser that you can connect it to if not you're going to have to install one and that makes it just a little bit more difficult so once you get the the uh, pressure port installed you're going to locate the L1 terminal to the condenser fan and break that wiring and you'll wire it into the pressure switch controls All right, so the next thing you want to look at is the uh, pressure settings. There'll be screws on the uh, top of this unit that'll adjust these pointers to the point that you want. Now, let's take a look at the differential. This is the difference in pressure between cut in and the cut out pressure. You want to keep that between 30 and 50 PSIG. If you set it, uh, if you set it below 30, what's going to end up happening is the fan is going to cycle on and off quite rap rapidly and you're going to burn out your condenser fan. If you set it for above 50, there's it's too long of a period for the fan to be off and that causes wide swings in the head pressure and those wider swings in the head pressure, th that can also cause metering problems. So you want to keep that differential pressure between 30 and 50. The initial setting before you, you dial it in, you should put it at 40 and that's a good place to start. Let's take a look at the settings that we have right here. So let's call this 210 at this point. So at 210 PSIG, this switch pressure switch will close and anything above 210 is going to run the condenser fan motor. So 210 and above, switch closes, condenser fan comes on. Then there is a differential of 50. So if you take 210 and you subtract the differential of 50, that's 160 PSIG. So at, and this is where the fan cuts out. So at 160 PSIG, and below it this switch breaks and the condenser fan shuts off so let's take a look at how that works so the 
it's warm during the day, condenser fans running, uh, the pressure is above 210 PSIG, and it's humming along without an issue. It's, it uh, gets into the evening, the amb ambient temperature falls below 60 degrees, and the head pressure starts to drop from 210 to 200 to 180, and on its way down when it gets to 160, which is the difference between the high event and the differential, 160 PSIG, this switch breaks, shuts the condenser fan off. Because the condenser fan is off, the head pressure begins to rise and it goes back up from 160, 170, 180, up to 210. The switch comes on and it maintains that head pressure. So the head pressure is going to stay between 160 and 210 in this example. So when you first install this uh, fan control, you're going to really want to set this uh, differential to, to 40 because that gives you uh, that gives you the midpoint on the differential. And you do not want the saturation temperature or the temperature of the refrigerant in the condenser to fall below 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So with an R22 system, that's 168 PSIG. This is your low, low point. So remember, your low point is the differential minus the high event. So with the differential set at 40 PSIG, you take 168 plus 40, that is 228 PSIG and that's where you want to set your high event and that's going to be your starting point. And then you'll hook your gauges up to the system and run it during a low ambient conditions and watch the pressures and temperatures and the fan cycling and the fan cutting off. You may have to adjust the differential a little bit and the high event just a bit but this is a very good starting point and you shouldn't have to make too many adjustments to get it dialed in and get it right. Pretty simple system, easy to install, um, easy to set up if you understand the high event and differentials and we will move now move on to the um, condenser flooding. Alright, see you in the next video.